So in this section, we are going to focus on the three-phase three-wire system. The three-phase three-wire system usually has balanced source voltages. However, the load may be balanced or unbalanced. Now, such systems are better analyzed when the load is configured in delta due to the fact that in the delta system, the line voltage is equal to the phase voltage. Now let's consider the situation where we have three balanced source voltages configured in delta. So we have this to be VAB, VBC, and then VCA. Now these are called the line voltages and they are equal to the phase voltages as well. Then we have this source feeding a delta connected load of impedances ZA ZB and then ZC. Now this load may be balanced or unbalanced. Now if the load is balanced, it means that the phase impedances ZA, ZB and then ZC are equal. And if they are unbalanced, then it means that the phase impedances are not equal. So let IAB IBC and then ICA be the phase current flowing in the respective phases and then let IA IB and then IC be the respective line current. Now in such a circuit it is usually desired to find the phase currents as well as the line currents. So how do we find the phase and line currents of this particular circuit? Now considering the phase current, we are basically going to apply KVL for each of the loops. Now considering this loop, The current IAB, that is the phase current IAB, is equal to, we have the phase voltage VAB divided by the phase impedance, which is ZA. So that is that for the current or for the phase current IAB. So now moving on to the second phase, that is for the phase current IBC. We have IBC equals, that is considering this loop, we have IBC equals VBC divided by ZB. And then for the last phase, we have the current ICA equals for that also, let's consider this loop. That is the outer loop. We have ICA equals VCA divided by ZC. So that is that with the phase current. Now let's move on to the line current. So for the line current, we are going to apply KCL at each of the nodes at the load. So to find the value of IA, we have current IA approaching this node. We have current ICA also approaching this node, whereas IAB is leaving the node. So we can say that IA plus ICA 
is equal to IAB. Now, if you want to find IA, then IA is nothing but IBC minus ICA. Now, let's move on to IB. Also for IB at node B. So here we can say at node A. And then here at node B. So at node B, we have IB approaching the node. We have IBC leaving the node. And then IAB also approaching the node. So that's going to be IB plus IAB equals IBC. Therefore, we have IB equals IBC minus IAB. So at this point, I believe that you should be able to guess the trend. Now, if you want to find the value of IA, then IA is equal to now for the first letter we have A here and then for the last letter you also have A and then from A you move on to B so if you have B here then automatically the next letter is going to be a C also for IB because you are finding the value of IB then we have the first letter to be B and the last letter here also to be B and then now from B you move on to C now, if you move on to C, then the next letter here is going to be an A. So we can say that at node C, we have IC equals, because we are finding for IC, we have the first letter to be C and the last letter also to be C. Now from C, we are going to start the whole process again. So you have A here. And then because we have A, then we are going to have B here. So basically, this is how to find the phase and line current of a three-phase three-wire system, especially when both the source and the load are configured in delta. So what if at this time the load is star connected instead of it being delta connected now if you have the load to be star connected then we can transform that star connected load into an equivalent delta connected load before we even start with the whole solution process and we can do that using the delta star transformation formula so let's assume that we have the load connected in star So we have this to be ZA, ZB, and then ZC. And then we are going to transform this star connected load to an equivalent delta connected load. So in this case, we have this to be ZA, ZC, and then ZB. So we have the impedances in the delta connected load to be upper caps and then that of the star connected load to be lower caps. So using the delta star transformation formula, we are going to find an expression for ZA, ZB, and then ZC, that is for the delta connected load. So we have ZA equals the sum of these two impedances, that is ZA plus ZB plus their product, so ZA, ZB, divided by the third impedance, which is ZC. Also for ZB, we are going to have ZB plus ZC 
plus their product divided by the third impedance which is za and also if you want to find the value of zc that is giving us za plus zc plus their product divided by the third impedance which is zb so basically this is how to transform a star connected load into a delta connected load so let's try an example on this an unbalanced delta connected load has the following impedances za equals 10 ohms zb equals 15 plus j20 ohms and then zc equals 12 minus j12 ohms now if the source voltages are vab equals 208 polar 0 vbc equals 208 polar negative 120 and then vca is equal to 208 polar plus 120 then a Calculate the magnitude and angle of the phase currents IAB, IBC, and then ICA. And then B. Calculate the magnitude and angle of the line currents IA, IB, and then IC. So let's try this simple problem together. Now, from the question, we are being told that we have three impedances, and these impedances are connected in delta. And because the impedances are not the same, we say that we have an unbalanced delta connected load. And then we are given the source voltages VAB, VBC, and then VCA. And of course, these are the line voltages. And because the source is considered to be delta connected, we can say that the line voltages are equal to the phase voltages. So if we want to find the magnitude and angle of the phase current, then that is let's say considering the first phase we have the current or the phase current iab equals the phase voltage vab divided by the phase impedance za so according to the question we have vab giving us 208 polar zero divided by we have za to be 10 ohms now converting this to the polar form that's going to be 10 polar 0 therefore 208 divided by 10 gives 20.8 and then 0 minus 0 is still 0 so this is the value of the phase current iab now let's move on to the phase current IBC so that is also giving us VBC divided by ZB now we have VBC giving us 208 polar negative 120 divided by ZB is giving us 15 plus J20 ohms now converting this value to the polar form that is giving us 25 polar 53.13 now 208 divided by 25 gives 8.32 polar negative 120 minus 53.13 gives negative 173.13 so that is the value of IBC and then for ICA we have VCA divided by ZC and that is equal to VCA is giving us 208 polar plus 120 divided by ZC is equal to 12 minus J12 ohms so also converting this to the polar form then that gives 16.97 polar negative 45 
So 208 divided by 16.97, we have 12.26 12 12 polar, 120 minus negative 45 is 165. So we also have this to be the value of the phase current ICE. So these are the values of the phase currents IAB, IBC, and then ICE. Now let's move on to B, where we are going to find the magnitude and angle of the line currents IA, IB, and then IC. Now in the previous section, we established the fact that IA is equal to now, since we are going to find the value of IA, then that is going to be, we have the first letter to be A, and then the second letter here also to be A. Now, from A, we are moving to B, and then because we have B here, then it means that we are going to have a C here. Now, we have IAB to be 20.8 polar 0 minus ICA. That is 12.26 polar 165. Now subtracting this value from this gives 32.79 polar negative 5.55. Now let's move on to the line current IB. So because we are finding the value of IB, that is giving us the first letter becomes B, the second letter becomes B. Now from B, you are moving to C, and then because we have C here, then it means that we are going to have an A here. So that is also equal to IBC is 8.32 polar negative 173.13 minus IAB that is 20.8 polar 0 so that is going to give 29.08 polar negative 178.04 And then for the last line current, IC, that is giving us 12.9 polar minus IBC. 8.32 polar negative 173.13 and that is equal to 5.50 polar 130.67 so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye